four weeks ago, Sam had her two children removed from her care by child protection. Now, this brought up a lot of memories for Sam because she was removed from her mother's care as a child and raised by her elderly grandmother. Sam also suffered a traumatic childhood of abuse and neglect, and which spiralled into inappropriate relationships with older men, and then she also suffered at the hands of a violent ex-partner. As an adult, this meant that Sam self-medicated, first with alcohol, and then she progressed to harder substances. Now Sam has to face course on charges of drug possession. As Sam makes her way to Magistrate's Court, she's not alone. Thankfully, she was referred to women and mentoring, and because of that, she has her mentor by her side, literally holding her hand, helping her navigate her way through the next challenge in her life. And I think for most of us, you know, as you approach Melbourne Magistrates Court, particularly now with all the video cameras, the news cameras, the crowds, the police, navigating your way through the metal detectors, coming into the courtroom and trying to work out where you're going, how long you have to wait and who's going to hear your case, it can be pretty <coughs> overwhelming. But having, Sam, having her mentor by her side means that Sam is going to face these charges. She's not going to take off. She's going to face what's in front of her and that's a really big step for Sam. She's determined to face these charges, but also proves she's a good mother and deserves her children back in her care. And that's what women in mentoring does. We like to call ourselves WAM. WAM matches women who have been um, charged with a criminal offence with a screened mentor from the community to help them deal with the, uh, navigating the complex court system, but also deal with the underlying causes of their criminal behaviour. WAM started as a pilot program back in November 2009, working with women uh, who presented at the Neighbourhood Justice Centre in Collingwood. And the program was set up primarily to um, keep women out of prison, to stop them from re-offending, to build the social um, construct around them, so build that social cohesion and community connectedness, but also maintain the family unit. And that's a really important thing, I think. Um, and over the last three years, we've been lucky to um, be fortunate enough to rely on philanthropy to help us grow into Sunshine, Heidelberg and Melbourne Magistrates Court. And we've also been lucky to have a great a network of mentors behind us to do that. So who are our mentors? What do they do and what do they even look like? So this is Cheryl. On back, please. Thanks. So this is Cheryl and Sam, and they're uh, Sarah. Sorry, this is Cheryl and Sarah, and they're meeting at Northcote Plaza having a coffee. They were matched recently. Our mentors are recruited from the local community. They're screened and they're trained for their role. Um, and the things that they do within that mentor match is really about trying to achieve the goals that the woman has set for herself. It could be helping that woman get to court. It could be going to other appointments and driving her to those appointments. It could be helping her get back into the workforce, helping her write her CV. Um, it could be accessing childcare. It's, it could be a range of things and it really comes down to what is that woman wants to achieve and her mentor helps her. And women in mentoring is there to support that, that, that friendship and that relationship the whole way through. We provide the skills and the training for our mentors. They meet regularly to also um, build that, on that community of volunteer mentors. It's practical, non-judgmental support. And WAM supports each individual relationship to ensure they do reach you know, better life outcomes. And you might be wondering, how is women in mentoring to different services out there? Some of you may have even heard of the Court Integrated Support Program or Court Network. And these are limited short-term programs and there's generally no outreach with them. The difference is our volunteer mentors are there because they want to be there. They're matched based on their interests, their personality and their capacity to deal with the woman and her complex needs. The difference is they're available to take a phone call or a text message at a time of crisis or a time of need. They're there not just during business hours, but they're there to be a shoulder to cry on, a listening ear and a hand to hold, hold their hand through the challenging situation that they're in. And they develop a friendship and a relationship that can be lifelong and enduring, much longer than the life of the program. And it makes an impact on the woman and her family. So Sam is a lot like the other women we work with. Thank you. Statistically speaking, um, we know that 87% of women in contact with the criminal justice system um, have incomplete secondary education. They haven't finished secondary school. We know that 75% of women have experienced a substance abuse disorder. 50% have indicated homelessness in the lead up to going into incarceration and also leaving prison. 80% have been victims of childhood sexual abuse or trauma, also into their adulthood and 90% have indicated they've experienced a mental disorder. 
Over the next 10 years, the number of women in Victoria who receive a custodial sentence will increase by 65%. Women may be a minority in prison, but the number is expanding. And these are pretty grim statistics. Incarceration of women creates a major social issue. There is a negative impact on her, her health, her future, but also on her family, her children. We have identified that Frankston has the second highest number of female offenders. Rates of family violence, mental illness, drug and alcohol abuse and child protection notifications are greater here than the, st the state average. A significant number of women in Frankston present with intergenerational issues relating to abuse, social disconnection and family violence. These issues are at the heart of women offending in Frankston. It's time for WAM to come to Frankston. To date, and this is a good statistic for a change, 94% of women we've worked with have not re-offended. In fact, they've engaged with services to have a positive life outcome. So we know the program works and we know it's effective. Did you know it costs $100,000 to keep a woman in prison for a year? With $15,000, we can screen, recruit, and train, recruit, screen and train enough women to support five vulnerable women for a year in Frankston. With $30,000, we can help 10 women. My colleague in the room, Lisa Abbott, from the Peninsula Primary Care Partnership, already has those 10 referrals, and she has a strong interest from the community for potential mentors. So with your help tonight, WAM can be in Frankston tomorrow. Thank you.